then just um, some information. As we've mentioned, we are health educators. We're not um, doctors. So if your doctor has prescribed something or given you information regarding your health, just make sure to follow their orders. Our information are just health tips, and we hope they can help you. All right, and then for today's agenda, we will be learning um, on the importance of protein. We're gonna learn about fats, saturated and unsaturated. We're gonna be talking about, our, about eating and our feelings. And at the end, we will be establishing goals. All right, so last week, Ms. Joy, we did have new challenges. So we did have a fiber challenge and a hunger and fullness challenge. I know you were not here for that class, so if you want to talk about some of the previous challenges we've discussed to see if, how they've gone or if you've continued using them as a way to stay healthy, we would like to hear from you. So far, I have been keeping up with the you know, eating with different cultures, all well, the different foods, and we'll be eating more healthier, we'll be sitting at the table, eating with each other a lot more. Yeah. Also, it gets better and better. And even yesterday for my birthday. Oh, you know, happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> All right, so you said you mentioned that you're doing like the um, eating different cultural foods. So how did, how did that go for you? It's going pretty good. We've been, um, we've been introducing a lot of new foods into my family, or into the house. And even yesterday, we just had Cambodian food. Nice, from, and what kind of food did that include? It was just, I forgot what it was called. But it had like flat noodles and kale, um, shrimp, imitation crab, onion, garlic. It had a whole bunch of vegetables and it was so good. That's good. Yes, I'm glad that you're including vegetables in your meals, even when you are trying new foods. So I'm glad to hear that you've been keeping up with that part of the healthy uh, challenges. So thank you for participating. All right, and then these are just some of the same reflections from um, this challenge or the past week. So what things did you do this past week to stay healthy? I went to, well, just this week, I just went to the beach and I walked like almost like two miles. Oh, that's great. So staying physically active, that's awesome. And I've been writing in my journal much more. So writing a journal? And what kind of um, journal is this? Do you write about like what you're eating throughout the week or what does that reflect on? It's just everything, what I'm eating, what I'm feeling. And oh, like sometimes good. even my dream. So like a reflection journal of what's happening in your life. That's good. I'm glad that you're doing that for yourself. All right, and then our next question. So what things got in the way of being healthy this past week? One thing for me, it would have to be like timing. Like sometimes I like to, like I'm usually like either out, I'm out all day. And then it's just like, I can't go home real quick and then go get something. But it's just usually timing. Okay, so maybe um, like planning out your day, maybe that can be a way to help you um, make sure that you eat your meals properly or you have time for physical activity. Just like you mentioned, you have a reflection journal. So um, maybe in that you can plan out um, like what time or what times during the day you'd like to complete something. So thank you, thank you for sharing with us. All right, so today we will be talking about how protein gives us power and keeps us healthy and strong. 
So just looking at this picture here, what um, types of protein do you think there are? Or what sources of protein? Protein from vegetables. Right. Eggs, meat. That's right. Yes, so we get our protein eggs. from plants. Eggs, hello, who is this? Roman? Thank you for joining us, yes. Roman. All right, so as we were mentioning, yeah, we do get our protein from animals and plants. All right, so if we remember these past weeks, we've been learning about our mite plate. So we already talked about fruits and vegetables, and then last week we learned about grains. Today we'll be talking about the protein portion. All right. Oh, I already said that. <laughs> now we will be talking about the protein. All right. So proteins are the building blocks of all our body functions. High protein foods are also high in vitamins. That is why protein gives us power. Protein helps our body build more muscles, cells, and tissues. They also keep us full longer and they help us stay focused and concentrated throughout the day. So research has shown that eating more plant protein and less animal protein can be healthy and can also protect you from diseases, including cancer. There are two types of protein, animal protein and plant protein. Some examples of animal protein include, so if you guys can help me out to name them out, so we have pork tenderloin and another source of protein, chicken breast. chicken breast. We also have canned tuna, beef, fish filet, and dairy products. All right, and now we'll be talking about the four types of plant-based protein. So can anybody tell me what this is? What kind of protein is this? Tofu. Close, it kind of looks like tofu. Bread. <laughs> Bread. So this kind of plant protein is called tempeh. And it's also pronounced the same way in Spanish, tempe. All right, now how about this one? Can somebody guess what this one is? That looks like cottage cheese. <laughs> like cottage cheese? Yeah, so you already did mention it the first time when we tried tempe. Tofu? So, tofu, yes, this is tofu. And in Spanish, it's also pronounced tofu. All right, and how about this one? What is this? Nueces. Nueces, yes. So nuts are also a form of plant protein. Then we have peanut butter. So peanut butter can also be considered a protein. Mm -hmm. Not peanut butter sandwich after this. All right, and can someone tell me what kind of protein is this? Slices? Grains? Grains? Like. Chia, like flax seeds, beans, 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 beans. lentils. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah all those. are seeds. So seeds can also be considered a plant protein, or in Spanish we call them semillas. All right, so. Vegetables such as broccoli, collards, and spinach can also be plant proteins. Can anybody tell me what type of plant protein this is? Wheat. Wheat. So these are whole grains, or granos enteros, which include brown rice, quinoa, and oats. Does anybody know what this is? Peas. 
peas. Peas. The cookies are salted. They kind of look like peas, huh? So mm -hmm. these are what we call adamame. Oh. Yeah, so this is another type of plant protein. And what are these? Do we recognize these? Beans. Right, so beans, they're part of the legumes family. Or in Spanish, we call them legumbres, which include beans, lentils, peas, and chickpeas. All right, so just looking at this picture, can anybody name what ingredients are in each of these meals? So looking at the one on the right, what kind of ingredients are in there? Melon? Beans. Beans. What else do avocado. we see? Avocado. We see avocado. Cilantro. Cilantro. Red onion. We have red onion. So this one would be a little hard, those little white strings on top of the avocado, those are called um, sprouts. Bean sprouts? Yeah, they're called bean sprouts. All right, so these are just some examples of meals that contain protein or high plant-based protein. So the first one, we have an avocado toast with avocado, sprouts, and almond butter on a whole wheat bread. And then the one on the right is a multi-bean chili soup with vegetables. And here are some of the ingredients. It, it only takes about three ingredients to make these, so they're easy and quick to make. All right, so it is recommended that children consume three ounces of protein per day. And for adults, it is recommended that they eat five ounces per day. This number of portions is just distributed during the day. But remember to use your hand to measure the protein. And remember that children tend to have smaller hands, so their protein portions are going to be a little smaller for them. So the palm of your hand, so holding up two hands, is also used for meats like pork. And two hands are used for vegetables like spinach. All right, so this week we will be giving you guys the plant protein challenge. This challenge is to eat more plant-based protein foods like the ones we learned. And remember the recommended daily intake of protein for your age group. So who can give me some examples of a plant protein? Tofu. Tofu, yes. What else? Beans. Beans. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, so those are two types of plant-based proteins that you can use throughout your meals during the week. All right, and this is how the challenge is going to look. So it's a handout that will be provided for us, and we will give you this um, through the Google Drive. All right. Y creo que ha entrado la señora Mónica y su hijo Kevin. Entonces, bienvenidos a la clase de salud con nosotros. Entonces, voy a empezar a hablar en español y en inglés para que puedan entender todos. So, we have a new friend uh, join us, Kevin and his mom, Mónica. So, I will be also speaking in Spanish so that they can understand our presentation. All right. So, now we will talk about fats. There are two types of fats. Unsaturated, which are the good and healthy fats and saturated, the bad or unhealthy fats. Entonces ahora hablaremos sobre grasas. Hay dos tipos de grasas. No saturadas, que son las grasas saludables, y las grasas saturadas, que son las grasas malas. All right, there are two types of saturated fats. Saturated, which are mostly found in animal foods, such as the Marbling of fat in red meat or a stick of butter. Uh, try to decrease your saturated fat intake, but remember it is also impossible to drop it to zero. Trans fat is another type of fat that raises your bad blood cholesterol or LDLs. 
and decreases your HDL cholesterol or good cholesterol, which increases the risk of heart disease. Hay dos tipos de grasas saturadas. Saturada. Se encuentra principalmente en los alimentos de renal, tales como la grasa en la carne roja o en la barra de mantequilla. Intente reducir su consumo de grasas saturadas, pero recuerde que es casi imposible llegar a cero. Trans es otro tipo de grasa que aumenta su mala colesterol en la sangre. Esta es conocida como el colesterol LDL y baja su colesterol bueno, que también es conocida como el colesterol HDL. Okay. Y ahora vamos a ver un video de las grasas malas. So now we're going to watch a short video about the Bad Fats Brothers. Where's the video? Mm, let me pull it up. I have it right here. Okay. Welcome to our favorite place. I'm Sat, short for Saturated, the bad fat you've known for years. <laughs> and I'm Trans, the bad fat you've uh, seen in the news lately. We're the Bad Fast brothers, brothers, and we are real heartbreakers. We live for those moments when you eat any of the many foods we're in. I hope you're hungry, because I have some selections you are going to L-O-B-E love. There's so much of me in here, I don't know where to begin. No, oh, skip the menu. Uh, I have just what you want. Fried chicken. Mm -hmm. I can top that. A juicy cheeseburger. <laughs> With crispy fries. Oh, and don't forget the butter. For the fluffy biscuits. And hey, nothing like a nice thick steak and a loaded potato. And my tempting goats and flaky pastries. Seems unkind to call us bad fats when we're so enjoyable. So attractive. So oh, maybe we do clog up your arteries. And raise your bad cholesterol. Okay, we're bad for you, but we're so good at it. Oh, what a nice slice of cherry pie, huh? Be sure to eat all the crust. The Bad Fats Brothers. Don't let them break your heart. Visit badfatsbrothers.com. All right, so did we enjoy that video? Yes, it was really cute. <laughs> Maybe. All right, let's see. So can anybody name some of the bad fats that were mentioned in this video? Donuts. Donuts, yeah, donuts is one. What other things did we see? ¿Qué otras cosas vimos en este video que enseña las grasas malas? Cupcakes. Cupcakes. The cherry pie. Cherry pie. La carne grasosa. Uh huh. Entonces enseñaron carnes como la hamburguesa. So, um, Annika was saying how there's um, fatty meats. So they did show us a cheeseburger there. So that is a bad fat. All right. Gracias todos por compartir. Thank you everyone for sharing. We'll be pulling up the, the PowerPoint. Oh, thank you.
Give me one second. Okay. All right, so now we're going to talk about the good fats. There are two types of unsaturated fats, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated. You might not find them listed on the nutrition facts label, but many foods have these types of fat. For example, monounsaturated can include avocados, olives, and olive oil. Polyunsaturated can include vegetable oils such as sunflower, corn, safflower, soy, and, uh, and cottonseed oils. A special kind of polyunsaturated fats is the omega-3 fat, which is mainly found in fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, and herring, walnuts, and flax seeds. Hay dos tipos de grasas saludables, no saturadas, la monoinsaturadas y poliinsaturadas. Es posible que no los encuentre en las etiquetas de información nutricional pero muchos alimentos tienen ese tipo de grasa, como por ejemplo, en las grasas monoinsaturadas incluye el aguacate, olivos, el aceite de oliva, e incluso, um, oh, ya dije el aceite de oliva. Okay. Y el poliinsaturadas incluye el aceite de vegetal de cártamo, maíz, girasol, soya y aceites de semilla de algodón. El omega-3, que se encuentra principalmente en los pescados, Um, en los pescados grasosos como el salmón, ceballa y el aranque y también se encuentra en las nueces y semillas de lino. All right, and now we're going to watch a video of the Better Fat Sisters. Y ahora vamos a ver un video de las, de las hermanas grasas buenas. Thinking of cooking? Think of your heart. I'm Mon, short for mono unsaturated fat. And I'm Polly, unsaturated fat. We're the Better Fat Sisters. We help lower your risk of heart disease. Have some of the foods we're in, like fish, nuts, and vegetable oil. Oh, that's right, sis. Eat less of those foods our bad fat brothers saturate and trans are in. They'll break your heart. Remember, we're better, but we're fats too. We all have nine calories per gram. So go easy on the portions and spend more time with us. The Better Fat Sisters. Be kinder to your heart. All right, and do we enjoy the Better Fat Sister video? Yes. All right, so can anybody tell me um, what kind of good fats were mentioned in this video? ¿Alguien me puede decir qué grasas buenas vieron en este video? Like, um, sunflower oil was mentioned. Right. What else did we see? ¿Qué otras cosas vimos en el video? Eh, vimos que el omega 3 que viene en los pescados, en las olivos. Ajá, uh -huh. eso también lo hicieron. Lo de omega 3. A salad, yes, yeah, so of the vegetables. Walnuts. Walnuts. Yeah, so those are all examples of good fat. All right, so as we saw in the video, we want to eat better fats with the better fat sisters, rather than the bad fats with the bad fats brothers. There are a lot of ways you can replace bad fats with good fats. You can replace your red meats, as shown here in the picture, um, that are high in saturated fats, such as bacon, hamburger patties, tri-tip, or carne asada, with white meats, such as 
fish and chicken, which are leaner and have less fat. Puede uno reemplazar las carnes rojas, que son altos en grasas saturadas, como el tocino, las hamburguesas, las tres puntas con carnes blancas, que son más magras y con menos grasa, como el pescado y el pollo. El pescado tiene el más grande cantidad de grasas insaturadas y es la mejor opción. También puedes comer pollo asado en lugar de pollo frito. So here in the picture, we see fried chicken. You can also eat grilled chicken rather than fried chicken. All right. So another way that we can replace bad fats with good fats is by replacing the, um, the toppings of your pizza. So for example here, what kind of pizza is this? Pepperoni pizza. Pepperoni pizza, right. So what we want to do is replace the toppings on our pizza to make it healthier. So instead of pepperoni and lots of cheese, we can add olives, tomatoes, vegetables. We can add spinach to it to make it a healthier option. And there are other ways that we can um, change the unhealthy fats to healthier fats. So we want to try to use less mayonnaise or ranch on your sandwiches or with your vegetables and replace them with hummus or avocado. So uno puede intentar de usar menos mayonesa o ranch en sus sandwiches con sus verduras y reemplazarlo con el hummus o aguacate. All right, so what are the two types of fats? ¿Cuáles son los dos tipos de grasas que hemos hablado? Las saturadas y las insaturadas. Ah, uh, sí, correcto. Entonces, la insaturada y la saturada. So we talked about unsaturated and saturated fats. So we want to try to choose more unsaturated, which are the healthy fats, rather than the saturated fats or the bad fats. Entonces, nosotros queremos consumir más grasas insaturadas en vez de las saturadas, que son las grasas malas. Certain fats are good for us, but they're still fats, so we need to make sure to stay within our limit. Las comidas de grasas no saturadas o insaturadas todavía son grasas y por eso debemos delimitar las grasas que comemos. Our body needs all types of fats, whether good or bad, in very minimal amounts because they can protect us from our temperatures, they can help with the development of our brains, and they help us prevent blood clotting and keeps our heart, our heart healthy. Todas las grasas son buenas o malas. Se necesitan en cantidades mínimas en nuestra alimentación porque nos protegen de las temperaturas. También nos ayudan a, con el desarrollo del cerebro y ayudan a prevenir la coagulación de la sangre y tener un corazón saludable. All right. So fats help our body absorb and transport nutrients like vitamin A, D, E, and K. Fats can keep you full longer, and they enhance the flavor of food. Las grasas ayudan a nuestro cuerpo a absorber y transportar los nutrientes como las vitaminas A, D, E y K. También nos mantienen llenos por largo plazo y nos mejora el sabor de la comida. All right, and this week we have another challenge for you. We have the get out or go challenge. Esta semana queremos que tomen el desafío de la actividad física que se llama salir afuera o el go. Um, place a star. So what we're going to do is we're going to provide this sheet for you guys or you can also just write it down on a piece of paper. So this week we want you to take this challenge and place a star on each pair of shoes when you achieve a 30 minutes of physical activity a day. 
We want everyone to do at least one hour of physical activity every day. You can divide the time into 30 minutes. So you can do half an hour in the morning or in the afternoon. And then, uh, sorry, I mean one in the morning. So 30 minutes in the morning and then 30 minutes in the afternoon. And that will be your one hour of exercise. Entonces, con este desafío o el reto go, queremos que coloquen una estrellita en cada uno de los zapatos. Entonces, queremos que en el día hagan ejercicio al menos una hora. Entonces, pueden dividir este tiempo 30 minutos en la mañana y 30 minutos en la tarde. Y así completarán una hora de ejercicio. All right, and now we will be changing our topic to eating and feelings. So food can bring us a lot of happiness, especially when it is delicious. We sometimes also have cravings because we might feel other emotions such as sadness, boredom, or sometimes even anger. So we will be talking about how you can stay healthy by listening to your bodies and emotions. Entonces ahora cambiaremos um, de tema y hablaremos de cómo comer y sentir. Cómo la comida nos puede traer mucha felicidad especialmente cuando la comida está deliciosa. A veces también nos da antojos de hambre cuando nos sentimos tristes, aburridos y hasta a veces enojados. Entonces ahora vamos a hablar de cómo podemos mantenernos sanos cuando escuchamos a nuestros cuerpos y emociones. Oh, can you go back to the previous slide, please? All right. So food is around us all the time. Any time of the day, any day of the week. Food is easily to find and we can eat all hours of the day. But it is important to listen to the symptoms of hunger. Craving because of feelings or emotions such as sadness, anger, um, can be one of the top reasons we eat when we're not really hungry. So when you avoid thinking about what is bothering you, like a bad day at school, you often make the problem worse. Entonces, la comida está alrededor de nosotros todo el tiempo, en cualquier momento del día y cualquier día de la semana. Es importante escuchar los síntomas del hambre. A veces tenemos antojos de hambre y eso causa, a causa de nuestros sentimientos o emociones. Y esto es una de las principales razones por qué comemos aunque no, ten, no tengamos hambre. Al evitar pensar en lo que te molesta como un mal día en la escuela, a menudo hacen que el problema se empeore. All right, so now we're going to be talking to our friend Eddie. Entonces ahora vamos a platicar de nuestro amigo Eddie. So Eddie isn't as lucky as you are to have a family, to have family and friends here like we do in our healthy classes. We are going to be his friend and we're going to help him by telling Eddie what he can do instead of craving food when he feels emotions. Entonces, nuestro amigo Eddie es un niño que no es tan afortunado mm -hmm. como nosotros de tener una familia de amigos aquí en nuestras clases saludables. Vamos a ser amigos de Eddie y ayudarlo diciéndole qué puede hacer cuando tenga antojos de hambre debido a sus emociones. All right, so Eddie is feeling sad and lonely. Let's help him by telling him what he can do instead of craving food when he feels sad or lonely. Entonces, Eddie se siente triste. ¿Qué podemos hacer para que, no, para que Eddie no se sienta triste? So, ayuden, ayudémoslos diciéndole a Eddie qué puede hacer en lugar de tener antojos, hambre cuando se siente triste o solo. So can anybody tell me what we can tell Eddie so he doesn't feel sad and how we can help him not eat while he's sad? He can think more positive and like do something more active and not so dreary and sad because that's just going to keep sad. He shouldn't sad eat or that's really unhealthy if he's sad to eat sometimes. So he shouldn't do that. He should like think about listening to music or painting or playing with his toys or watching TV, something that will bring him up in cheery mood. Thank you, Ms. Okoye. Yeah, those are great things that we can tell Eddie. So painting is a good way to distract yourself when you're feeling sad. That way you don't eat when you're really sad. 
Entonces, nuestra amiga Sequoia nos estaba diciendo que le podemos decir a Eric que puede hacer algo divertido, como escuchar a la música o pintar o dibujar para que no se sienta tan triste, Eric. Y así no coma cuando está triste. Thank you for sharing this. All right, so now Eddie feels bored. What things can Eddie do to not feel bored? Entonces, ahora nuestro amigo Eddie se siente aburrido. ¿Qué Play cosas with podemos... toys? Yeah, so playing toys. So, como dice nuestro amigo um, Roman, dice que podemos decirle a Eddie que juegue con sus juguetes para que no se sienta aburrido. Yeah, so that's a good way to not feel bored. Or we can also tell him, hey, Eddie, you want to play with us? And then we can have someone to play with and Eddie won't feel so bored. Thank you for sharing, Roman. All right, so también, now. También mm -hmm. podríamos um, ayudarlo invitándola a jugar juegos uh, de mesa y um, o viendo una película juntos para que también puedan distraer su mente. Sí, muy bien. Ajá. Entonces, um, ver una película juntos es otra manera de um, no estar tan aburrido y invitarlo a él. So, our friend Monica, or Kevin's mom, was telling us that we can also tell Eddie, Hey, Eddie, do you want to watch a movie with us? That way he can distract himself and not be so bored. So then you can watch a fun movie with him. Gracias por compartir, señora Monica. All right. So, Eddie feels angry. What things can Eddie do to not feel angry? Eddie se siente enojado. ¿Qué cosas podemos hacer para que Eddie no se sienta enojado? He can work out and let his anger out. Yeah, it's a good one. So working out is a good way to release anger. So it's a stress reliever. So that's a good one. Um, nuestra amiga Joy dice que le podemos decir a Eddie que haga ejercicio. Así puede no sentirse tan enojado y puede um, sentirse Reducir su estrés del enojo. Thank you for sharing, Miss Joy. That's a good one. All right. So Eddie feels really happy. What things can we do to continue feeling happy? Nuestro amigo Eddie se siente muy feliz. ¿Qué cosas podemos hacer para que Eddie siga manteniéndose feliz? He can continue to being happy by making positive choices and what he like continues on doing throughout the day. So like. He can do like dancing with his friends. He can uh, sing and dance. I don't know, <laughs> like something that brings him joy and that makes him happy. Yeah, so that's a good one. So if Eddie loves dancing with his friends and that makes him happy, as Miss Sequoia said, if you keep doing something that makes you happy, you will always be happy. Nuestra amiga Sequoia estaba diciendo que Eddie puede hacer algo que le divierte o lo hace feliz. Por ejemplo, si le gusta bailar mucho, que siga bailando con sus amigos y así será feliz durante el día. All right, and thank you everyone for sharing. Gracias a todos los que compartieron. All right, so now we're going to be working on our weekly goals. Y ahora vamos a terminar con nuestra meta semanal. So here are some things that we learned this week. Que hay unas cosas que hemos aprendido durante la clase. So I'm going to ask each of you to pick one goal. Entonces le voy a preguntar a cada uno que escoja una meta para la semana. All right. So, Miss Sequoia, which goal would you like to work on this week? Eating and feeling. All right. So, eating and feelings. All right. Hey, la señora Monica y Kevin, ¿qué meta van a trabajar? Eat more plant and protein. All right. So, nuestro amigo Roman dice que va a comer más proteínas de plantas. All right, y señora Mónica y Kevin, ¿qué meta van a escoger esta semana para trabajar? Ju jugar más. All right, so jugar más, estar más activos. So, Mónica and Kevin are going to play more this week or be more physically active. All right, and Miss Joy, what goal would you like to work on? I would like to work on eating more plant proteins and playing more. All right, so eating more plant proteins and playing more. Awesome. Good job. So these are the goals that we will be working on. 
And then up next, we're going to have one of you guys and myself work through this goal planning. All right. So, Joy, would you like to participate? So, which was your goal again? To eat more plant-based protein and play more. All right. So, eating more plant-based protein. All right. So, for our qu first question, what will you need to complete this goal? in order to eat more plant-based proteins? More plants. <laughs> more plants? Like, um, more, more um, growing more plants. Um, probably tofu, soy, all of that stuff. All right, so maybe having the plant proteins in your home, that way they're easy and accessible for you. Nice, that's really good. All right, and then the next question, how will you reach your goal? <laughs> probably go grocery shopping go so, yeah. grocery shopping shopping yeah that's a good one so going grocery shopping um can help us reach our goals so if you go shopping and you get your ingredients you Ma have making a list making a list yes of the things you want to try so maybe new plant proteins that you've never tried that's a good one thank you roman all right and the last one how many times will you do this this week five times five times awesome all right and which goal was yours was yours also the plant protein how many days is one week so i have two days of not doing it five five days all right, so remember, so we want to choose something that's an achievable goal. So if you think five days is achievable, that's totally fine. So as long as you try each day, then you'll reach your goal. All right, thank you for participating on our goal planning. So then your sentence would look something like this. So this one's for playing um, five times a week. So like Miss uh, Joy was saying, she wants to eat more plant-based proteins. So she would say, I'm going to eat more plant-based proteins five times a week. So then she'll reach her goal and the next week we will talk about it. All right, and the next week we will talk about these topics, sweetened beverages and the healthy alternatives. We're gonna talk about sedentary behaviors, the importance of sleep. And then we will also make some other goals. En la próxima semana hablaremos sobre estos temas, las bebidas azucaradas y las alternativas saludables, el comportamiento sedentario y la importancia de dormir. Y también vamos a hacer completar más metas la próxima semana. All right, and then just a reminder, if we do go outside because there are opening more stores or locations, remember to stay safe and healthy. Remember to always wear a mouth covering, wash your hands, and maintain at least a six feet distance from other people to stay healthy. Okay, y solo para recordarles, um, para que estén saludables cuando salgan, como están abriendo tiendas y lugares para que uno pueda salir, de mantenerse seis pies de distancia y lavar sus manos siempre, y usar cobertores de cara para protegerse. All right, and then just for next week, if you have a piece of paper or pen so you can take notes or um, write down the um, goals or challenges that we provide, you can bring those with you. Nos para la próxima semana, si tiene papel o lapiceras, solo para ir tomando apuntes o para escribir los retos que les damos a ustedes. Okay, y ahora mi compañera Lucia les va a dar la encuesta de reflexión. So now my partner, Lucia, is going to provide you guys with a reflection survey. So if you guys can fill it out, it's going to be sent in the chat. Okay, y la encuesta de reflexión va a ser encontrada en el chat. Okay, entonces ya pueden ver la encuesta en el chat box. 
so the reflection survey is in the chat box and thank you everyone for participating and coming and joining us. I like hearing from everyone and thank you. Um, gracias a todos por venir y a participar en nuestra clase. Uh, la encuesta de reflexión ya se encuentra en el chat box.